Good morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. Long time no see. I'm sorry that I did not post last week. It was an incredibly busy week. Just a lot going on. I feel honestly like a brand new teacher all over again. Every night I'm taking the lessons that I've had and converting them into digital lessons, which is not an easy feat, as I'm sure many of you recognize. Um, so it's been a little stressful trying to make sure that I'm balancing both prepping for my CP class and my EP class. And then of course, last week, my SGO was also due. So that was also a lot of stress in compiling data and analyzing the data. But fortunately, that's over with now. So I'm back this week. I wanted to share with you what I've been doing with my CP class. I have both of my CP classes today, and I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with Google Slides. So I'm going to share with you how I've been creating some really engaging lessons for my students in my college prep chemistry class. But first, I need to set up for the day, but I will check in with you guys a little bit later on. I just finished with my classes for the day. It's probably about it's 2.38, so it's not too bad. Um, it's really nice having the day end at noon because then I can spend my afternoons working with students. So I had office hours pretty much until about 2.15 or so. Um, the students just kind of log into these different time slots. Um, I'll probably do a video about how I'm doing office hours a little bit later on this month, but it's working out really well and I get a notification every time they sign up so that if I don't have any students sign up, then I obviously I could spend my time prepping and things for the next day. I wanted to talk a little bit today about how I've been creating engaging lessons using Google Slides. To be honest, when I first was thinking about this school year, I had no idea that I would be using Google Slides as much as I do. Frankly, I thought more than anything, I would be using Google Docs. Um, and I was using it quite a bit, especially with the Polgal activities that I was doing with my CP and my AP classes. But this year, Google Slides is saving the day for me. It has made my life so much easier and has allowed me to make some really nice things pretty easily. I mean, again, as I mentioned, I'm up pretty much all the time working at night because I'm taking a lot of the things that I have in years past and used in my classes that are print ready and converting them into digital. But at this point, I'm able to take a lot of those print ready resources and convert them digitally just by using a few tricks in Google Slides. With Google Slides, you can create very engaging lessons because your students can drag and drop, they can type right in, and it all comes down to one major trick. That trick is using the Slide Master. And if you've taken my Digital Interactive Notebooks class by the Teacher Prep Room, you know that I love me some Slide Master. The Slide Master is what you will use whenever you have an image or maybe something that you wanna type in, like a question or something that you do not want your students to edit. It is super easy to find and it's even easier to edit and use. So let me show you what I'm talking about. To locate the Slide Master, go under the View menu and then click on Master. Then you'll notice on the left-hand side there's a lot of slides that appear. I would delete those because you won't be using all of those. And then I will click and drag over these text boxes because I like a nice blank canvas whenever I'm creating something for my students. So in this space, remember, this is where you're going to be adding those portions of your activities that you do not want your students to be able to edit. So more often than not, I post pictures and background images. Um, I'll post questions in here. Again, anything I don't want the students to be able to edit. So just as an example, if I go to insert in text box, I can, for example, type in question one. Um, this is question two, question three and maybe I'll spread them out a little bit. And then I'll do, um, maybe I'll insert an image just to show you. So maybe I'll click on periodic table here and then that'll insert right into the slide master. You can resize it to fill up the whole screen if you want, you get the idea. And then if I go back out of the slide master into the regular view, You'll notice that I can click over top of it, but I can't actually do anything. I can't actually click the delete button. All your students can do is add text. They can add shapes, things like that, but it will not delete what you have in the slide master. So you may say, Karen, how do you use this in your class? I use this in my class 
very frequently. I probably have done about a dozen of these activities just because whatever I'm doing really lends themselves to doing this type of activity. More often than not, it's almost like a digital card sort. And I've talked a lot about digital card sorts, you know, in the environment that we're in, this is probably the most feasible way to make sure that you can give these resources to your kids that are super engaging. The kids just love clicking and dragging. I don't know what it is about it, but they really enjoy it and it seems to be one of the more engaging activities that I do in my class. So here's an example of one of the first digital card sorts I did with my kids. This is on history of the atom. I've talked about this, I wanna say about a few weeks ago. I took these cards, made pictures out of them, and created a digital card sort. I do have a video on how to create digital card sorts that I'd be happy to link below so you kinda of know what I do and the steps that I follow. But this was the first thing that the students did. Um, they did it individually, so they did not work as a learning team with it, but it was just a quick thing for them to, to kind of review how atomic structure has progressed over time. A second thing that I love to do with Google Slides is have my students create models. So this is my what is light activity. And in this activity, the students spend time with Bohr models and they construct a model to illustrate how light is created. So obviously they would illustrate the excited state and the ground state and then what light transmission looks like. And so when students say that they have a difficult time kind of navigating what's on the computer, they don't actually have to draw anything. Instead, they can just navigate the pieces. So I pre-made all of these pieces and the students can very simply click and drag those pieces onto their models. So it makes it really easy to use. Another activity I created was a Bohr model activity. This is an activity that, again, on paper is very simple, easy to use, but if you wanted to have them do it digitally, that makes it a little difficult. So instead, what I tried to do here was create all the different energy levels so the students could click and drag their energy levels to their respective locations. And then what they can do is they can click and drag the electrons on. And for this one, it was a little tedious with the electrons, I will admit, but helping my students copy and paste and showing them how to do copy and paste has really made it a lot easier. Also teaching them keyboard shortcuts where they're holding down the shift key and then kind of moving the piece across the screen, that makes it a little bit easier as well. The next activity I made was getting to know the periodic table. So the periodic table obviously has special regions and areas that we want the students to know about. So right, the noble gases, the halogens, the transition metals, all of those things. So I wanted the students to spend time color coding their periodic table. So to do this, I had them use the online periodic table called P-Table and then simultaneously use that with a version on Google Slides. And so what I did is I created a table with as many boxes as there are for elements on the periodic table. And I pasted that onto the Google slide. And then I filled in all the symbols for all the elements so that the students could simply click and drag up a column, for example, or in an entire section, like in the transition metal section, they would have the ability to color code it really simply. The other thing that I wanted them to do is I had them highlight different text so they also had to color code that. So like, for example, I had the students identify the gases, I had them identify solids and identify liquids. And by highlighting it, they were able to color code it and show me that they understand where to locate these elements. More recently, the two activities I've been working on with my students are a shielding and effective nuclear charge one. With the shielding and effective nuclear charge, I like this one because it forces the students to collect some data. So it helps them to kind of understand what shielding is, and then it has them use Bohr models to help them calculate effective nuclear charge. And then on the next page, the students are asked a series of questions to help them make sense of the data that they collected. The last one that I want to show you is called Merry Men of Matterdom. Now I did not create this resource, so please do not ask if I'm going to be selling it on TPT because I did not make this one. But um, this is something that you can probably find on the internet and all I did was just use the snipping tool to create the boxes of the little um, people. And so what you can do is again, take these little people, make images out of them and just drag them drop into Google Slides. And what the students have to do is figure out the pattern and arrange these, um, they call them like agents, in order to kind of figure out what agent is missing. And then I had the students create a, um, like a Polaroid of what this little missing person would look like because I actually removed one of the images. So this was a really cool activity because it reflects on what the students have learned with the periodic table and what we kind of learned about valence electrons and Bohr models. And of course, like I said, regions of the periodic table, the students can connect what they see with the special agents 
and what they see obviously in chemistry. So that was kind of a fun thing for them to kind of see the different analogies, kind of how it relates to the people in the activity. So if you haven't used Google Slides for anything so far this year, I highly recommend it. Usually when I do this with the students, the students are working in their breakout rooms and I am absolutely loving the Google Meet breakout rooms. The only thing that I wish they would change is that it is very difficult to sort the kids, especially if you have pre-made groups. I find that my students really like working with the same people. Some students obviously want change and I will change them. I change them about every marking period, but with Google Meet, I've noticed that I kind of wish that it was a little bit easier to organize them. But after I kind of get them organized, I set them loose to work in their breakout rooms and then they're able to go through and complete their activities. As they're working on the activity, I'll go into Google Classroom and I'll kind of see where they are and what they're working on. And if I see they're having a difficult time, I'm able to just jump right into the breakout room very easily. I can bring up what they're doing in Google Classroom and we can talk together and it just helps them to get on the right track. So I think that's it for me. As always, I welcome your questions and your feedback. If there's anything that you want to know, please do not hesitate to ask. I'm even happy to make a tutorial if you need. But if you're interested in learning about how to make digital interactive notebooks, please feel free to take a look and preview my course at the Teacher Prep Room. It's a great course. It'll give you a lot more information than technically you would need um, in order to do any of these activities. But I think it might be good to have an overall understanding of how you can create these for your students. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.